welcome to our guide to how to win a poker tournament. You've come so close, but now's not the time to freeze. Your head up, and whether it's up against a snot-nosed punk or a hardened pro, you have to know what to do. You can't turn back, but don't worry, because our pros are gonna reveal all their tricks, their tips, their strategies to win, and you will one day be hoisting the trophy. Joining Jesse May in the studio of poker pros Noah Boken and Tony G, and offering a unique insight into the game, the legendary Mike Sexton. The biggest jump in prize money in every poker tournament you will ever play in as long as you live is between second place and first place. It's where the most money is at stake. It's where you're supposed to bear down. Don't be happy just because you got to a heads up situation. This is where you really want to focus and go after the win because that's where it's at. That's where the money's at, the fame, the recognition, it's all there. Well, so far we've learned most of how to win a poker tournament, but there's still a little bit left to go. We've learned how to sit down, what you should be thinking, play in early hands, steal in blinds, all in re-raises, big stacks, short stacks, and the bubble. But what happens when you've made it through to head up? How do you seal the deal? Let's turn to our top tournament pros, Noah Bukin and Tony G, to find out. Now, guys, seal in the deal. Uh, it's a big, big ask in tournament play. And let's talk about first if you get to the heads-up stage and you've got even chips. How do you approach heads-up poker? It's really important. There's a difference between you have to look at what the big blind is and the small blind. If you have a lot of chips to play or not, like... A lot of big tournaments later on, it's the blinds are so high, it's a lot of raise all in and not much flop play. But some tournaments you have a lot of play left, so you can really play it out. A lot of you can play a lot of hands. You can play the flop, the turn, the river. Well, if it's big blinds, I guess it's a, a bit of a crapshoot. Yeah. But how do you take the crapshoot away? Well, if it's if it's very big blinds, you have to be the most aggressive player. So. You have a, a bit of an edge, but you can never take the crapshoot. There's, there's a bit of luck involved at the end, and whoever gets lucky is going to win. But it, it's about being aggressive and about trying to steal as many pots as possible. Well, I mean, obviously, when you're when you're you can't. There's no place to run and hide. It's so it's very hard, obviously, to play tight heads up. But if there is a lot of play in the stacks yeah, and the blinds want, are quite you want, small, you want to try to raise almost every button. Yeah, you should raise every button unless you have a good reason for it and continuation bet on the flop. And you should just yeah, play smart, play the car hands in position, try to play not many hands out of position, because it's all about position if you last to act. It. How do you deal with the fact that most of the time both guys are going to have nothing? Well, that's, that's, that's why... great. That's why the one who bets gets it. <laughs> that's why I want to be more aggressive. So whoever's going to be betting and putting more money in the pot when everyone's got nothing, He's going to take more pots down, he or she. So, if the if a player is going to be attacking and attacking and attacking, heads up, you have a better opportunity to take pots that no one has anything, or you even have the worst hand. And what about pots when you're in the big blind heads up, and uh, you get raised? What percentage of those hands do you want to play? Is flat calling a good idea? It's it's all right. It really depends on your hand. If you have like a hand that could flop something big, you can make a call. But it really depends on the blinds. If, if you have a lot of play, you can call easily because you don't want to race and get re-raised again. So you just want to you play smart poker, but try to play more on the button when you're raising. Well, let's have a look at some heads-up play. At the World Poker Open final a few years ago, Liam Flood got head up with Lee Nelson. And when they got head up, uh, they had very even stacks, and the blinds were quite low. I mean, there was 1.2 million chips in play. And the blinds were only, I believe, seven and fifteen thousand. Wow, they have a lot of play. A lot of play. Um, Tony, you got a bit unfortunate to be out in third in this tournament. Oh. Yeah, With two queens, I think. Two queens, yeah. Two queens. Lee Nelson beat me. That's that's poker. And this very first hand, uh, Lee Nelson's limping in on the button, which is a small blind with two deuces. It's probably okay, because he knows that Liam Flood is very, very tight. The blinds are very low. Like, stealing 15,000 is not going to get you anywhere. There's no so value. You hope to hit a deuce, make a big hand, and break someone. I mean, how strong is a pair like two deuces heads up? It's, it's, it's not great. 
Unless you but flop it, it's not great. And unless you hit a deuce, it's, it's not nothing of but a But still, hand. he's got position, so he can put the pressure on. And if Liam doesn't hit anything, he can take it down. I mean, is it a hand that plays better if the blinds are big? Um, you know, for an all-in pot? Yeah, or? like, in general, when the blinds are low, the, the low pairs, you, you just play them to hit. A set and win big. And later on, you can just push, because you always have a pair. Well, he bet the flop, I think, 30,000 and got called by Liam, who's got Yeah, uh, so he's, he's done with the hand. He's just hoping to hit a deuce in the next uh, two cards. <coughs> There's no draws on the flop, almost. Like, he knows his deuces are beat. What should Liam be thinking? Oh, he's worried. He doesn't want him to bet. He doesn't want Lee Nelson to bet. If Lee Nelson bets, he should probably take the pot. Liam has a very weak hand here right now. He's got the bottom pair with a bottom kicker. Yeah, and his four over cards. He, he's going nowhere with his hand. And uh, doesn't see if he can call this. The bet's 70 into a 90,000 pot. Yeah, yeah, it's a really good bet. It's a great play. I mean, I remember awesome. earlier, and he's gotten Liam. Earlier in this series, you were talking about if you're going to make a bluff, you have to make it big enough, and that was nearly pot size. Yeah, yeah, that's good. That's fine. You can't can go bet 25,000 or 30. You have to bet like. Lee Nelson is just a very, very strong player, very aggressive, as you see. He's betting, he's betting, and that, that's how you should uh, watch Lee Nelson play heads up, and that's a great example. I mean, he's. Uh, it has nothing. He has no hand. I mean, the deuces might as well be nothing. I mean, if he gets called, he's losing. He's not getting called by Queen King there, so uh, he has a no hand. He's betting. He, he knows he can take it. So let's see another example of Nelson. I mean, how often heads up do you feel like you have to win with the worst hand? Every time, if you can. <laughs> the more times you win, the better chance you have of winning the whole thing. This is flood on the button with the <laughs> jack five. And these guys, I think, were playing a lot of pots. And the thing is, it's heads up, so every hand could be the best hand easily. And if you're the worst hand, you can easily win by betting. Liam has made a total of 35,000, which is almost a minimum raise. Yeah. Hi, Cole. Cole. Yeah, because of the size of the stacks, it's, it's good to play like yeah. this. Okay. Lee Nelson's going to want to play every hand because you can win. If you play, you can win, and you can win yeah, the Yeah, Lee Nelson's probably the better player on the flop. And I mean, should more Liam, experienced. should he be, be playing more, uh, be raising more before the flop? Yeah, for sure. We should be getting aggressive on a flop and on a turn. You should just be pushing it all the time. I can't believe he just checked it. I mean, that's terrible. He flopped a pair, which was pretty good when he did check it. Sixty thousand bet. He's bet sixty into a seventy thousand pot. Oh, he's running all over me. Pass. Pass. Yeah, we're just seeing consistently the, the most aggressive level, player we'll is pushing out the weaker player uh, with the worst hand, funnily enough. So. Yeah, I mean, in this way, it, like Lee sees Lee and plays this way. So when Liam ever is going to hit and is going to bet, Lee is just going to fold because he's just, you know, he's going to can keep hammering away, take little pots. And whenever Liam shows any strength, he can just back off because he doesn't need that pot. What would it be the correct strategy to play against someone like Lee who's, who's being aggressive? Be more oh, aggressive. You should put a raisin in the river instead of <laughs> worrying about 